Brilliant. Carl here from Games at Brains Are Banging Life with another episode of Desert Island Regs. This is where our illustrious guests are off to live out their remaining years on a desert deserted island. But to ensure boredom doesn't sink in, they're taking some stuff with them, namely either a set of video games or books, because those two are interchangeable, horror movies and music records. Now, nor nor well, we were gonna be four, so it's only three, so you're gonna have one each, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll try. Brilliant. We're stoked <laughs> to be well. We're stoked to be chatting with Matt, Adam, and Amy from UK. Progressive power metal heavyweights, Dekesis folks. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> Even yeah. busy. Yeah. <laughs> In this very uh, interesting time. Well, that is it. The next thing I was going to ask was, how are you all coping with the, the lockdown, as it were? I know it's kind of hit the keys as hard as it ruined a lot of your plans that you had in place. Yeah, it definitely did. Um, I think so we're having good days and bad days with it. But, you know, um, like Amy said, trying to keep busy. Yeah, I think I'd love to be one of those people that just gets to sit and play bass all day like everyone else seems to be doing. But... Um... <laughs> apparently I've got more work now than I ever have before <laughs> so yeah keeping very busy um yeah all right it's good that you've got that much work coming in well it's more administration isn't it than than uh actual proper work responding to people's uh requests and, and things like that managing the situation but can't complain I suppose <laughs> yeah and what 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 do you do like as you were stuck at home just kind of stay positive because you say sometimes it can kind of not it's very easy to get caught up in the mire of the entire situation uh... <laughs> 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 I think having um... having a, a plan helps daily plan mm. where you try and organize some things to do and stick to a schedule getting dressed really helps um <laughs> and Using your one day uh, or one daily exercise slash walk outside is also helpful. I think that's the only thing that's been really keeping me sane is just uh, having something, just anything to do. Um, so whether it's going out for a walk or a bike ride, um, at the moment I've decided to do like a like an Instagram cover a day, just you know requests and stuff like that, just to kind of keep me busy because. Um, even though we've still got a lot of stuff uh, still going on behind the scenes with the band, um, it's not realistically enough to fill a fill a day. So, uh, so we still need some kind of routine and some other, I don't know, fun daily tasks to do. I suppose. Huh. Well, presumably it's been quite disruptive, not just for the keys, but in your own personal lives and. It must, I guess it almost must be being like handcuffed at the moment where you kind of can't m quite move forward as you want to. Yeah, it is, yeah. It is pretty frustrating, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, obviously all, all the band stuff got postponed um, and so we were left with that that huge void. But like, you know, work and everything has, has also been cancelled and it's like, what do you do now, you know? Yeah, I mean, um, um, all three of us, we all work as uh, music educators, so uh, <laughs> instrument teachers, uh, well, all of us are instrument teachers, and um, uh, the music school that we've worked for, uh, within like 48 hours, had to go completely online. Mm. Uh, this was before the lockdown, um, but, you know, when things started to really take a turn for the worse. Um, they just took every single lesson online, so that was really intense for us getting used to something a bit new. And for myself personally, um, as a university lecturer, that's that's also thrown a huge spanner in the works for me as well in terms of you know uncertainties and, and things like that. So it's, it's a real uh, it's a kicker. Yeah, still a lot of like unanswered questions at the moment. Like you know, don't know where we stand with certain things and. Just waiting to see how it all falls down, you know. But taking the lessons in line, is that something you think you've adapted well to? Because it's the Birmingham Rock School, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um so it's it's Gemma's Gemma's school. Um and uh yeah, like Matt said, it was a huge, very quick turnaround that we had to do, undertake. Um 
I don't a, a lot of the tutors have never taught online before like I have I've never taught online before um, so yeah very new experience um, but yeah we managed to keep a, you know a, a majority of the students on board so you know it's not been terrible yeah. <laughs> it could have definitely it's just not been quite more. the same is it yeah 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 but you know you, you've got to adapt haven't you um, so yeah it was some some very quick thinking and uh, very quick logistics and um, yeah managed to keep the school going good good right well we'll get further into the keys to some fractures in a bit but we're gonna start off with your first choices now has anybody chosen a game um yeah i think i think i have okay <laughs> i think uh, the game was a was an easy one for me I, i'm not i'm not a huge movie fan um I've, I've seen i've seen movies but <laughs> um movies. you know I, I i know what they are um okay <laughs> Uh, the video editor that is a really weird thing for, <laughs> for <laughs> yeah no I, I i appreciate good movies and good effects and and things like that um but yeah on the games front it, it, it for me it would be like a command and conquer style strategy game uh okay probably red alert too because i i spent pretty much my entire teenage years playing that game instead of you know going out and making friends so <laughs> So I think I'd uh, I think I'd play that one. Plenty of plenty Forever. of to sink into, basically. Yeah, yeah. Remind yeah, me. Strategy. Remind me. I'm not sure. If, um, <coughs> I don't know if I've ever played Red Alert Two, but the, I presume that has map makers in the sense that you can kind of constantly make up your own maps. Um, yeah, I think um, there was a separate program that you could do that. Oh. I had a lot of fun with that. Um, but uh, but yeah. I spent a lot of time playing that game. <laughs> it's a time sink, basically. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And what about you two, Amy and Matt? What, what Do you have a game or a book? I um, have a game. Do you have a game, Matt? You can go, me? go uh, first if you like. So, so that's to be a game or a book, I'm assuming. From the first part, yeah. We've got the horror to come afterwards and the records to come last. Uh, the game one's, the game one's <laughs> tricky. Um, I mean, because... Uh, I don't do a lot of gaming anymore, but um, when I did, I was um, I was really into uh, like stealth games, like uh, like Splinter Cell and oh yeah, and stuff like that. Um, I've never really been uh, like a huge fan of like uh, like strategy games or like you know like Red Alert or uh, yeah MMORPGs or anything like that. Like it's never really or the fantasy thing. It's never really been my thing. Um, probably something that has. <laughs> are, are we going to expand this to? Uh, uh, online can we go online with this we're doing it on a basis that you have the entire kit and some form of internet connection <laughs> I, mean, I mean i mean it'd have to be some kind of uh, some kind of team based uh, some kind of team based shooter online i think that's probably the one i'd have the most fun with uh, for the longest period of time i think uh we always say when people start choosing multiplayer that's the cheat option <laughs> it is it is cheating because like there's only so long you can play a campaign for <laughs> before you start devolving into speed running but... Well, it totally depends on the game. There's find one with hundreds of hours, a Grand Theft Auto or something like that. And you said a stealth game, so something like Metal Gear Solid, you could surely, I don't know, get a couple of weeks of play out of that. I think GTA is a good suggestion, actually. If we're writing off online, then yeah, yeah. GTA is a, that's a good call, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What about you, Emmy? I oh. See, I was going to go for an online game. Um, you, you can, I'm just... You which, know. <laughs> well, I was going to go for World of Warcraft, but actually, I know that that's a bit of a touchy subject with uh, Blizzard at the moment. Um, mm. So maybe I'll I'll put that one aside and I'll go for Final Fantasy VII. Okay. The original or the, the new remake? The original. I've not actually played the new remake version yet. I... I don't want to. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Just in case, you know, just in case. Um, but yeah, that's definitely what I'd go for. Final Fantasy VII, old school. Is that a childhood thing then? Like a kind of played it when you were younger memory? Yeah, certainly in my um, early teenage years, uh, I was a big Final Fantasy fan all the way up to, um, we had 10 and then I'd, 
delved in and out of um, the, the later releases. What's there was um, the one for the PS4. I can't remember what that's called. I think I spent about two hours on that, and it just wasn't quite the same. So yeah, I've been a, a huge uh, Final Fantasy fan over the years. Yeah, it's an easy one to choose, and you'll get more than enough time out of campaign. The thing is, World of Warcraft is fine. The very first <laughs> one we did of this, the person chose World of Warcraft. Can't really argue with it. It'll yeah. basically you you don't need to bring anything else with you after that. Yeah, there's <laughs> so much to do in the game though. You don't even need to uh, play with with anyone else. You can just you know level up every single character that that you can get your hands on. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Right, so Fractures. It's been out for, well, almost a week at this stage. So are you pleased with the feedback that you've received so far? Not just from your review sites and stuff like that. We're just talking to general, you know, people when it came out who finally got to listen to it. Yeah, everyone's been <laughs> like... They've been really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah really positive, nice. nice. And yeah. Everyone's loved it. It's, all, it's always a worry, isn't it, when you're putting new music out there? Because you're thinking, oh, are people going to like this? You know, how does it compare to the last album? Um, what what are they going to make of it? But the, especially when everyone it's a lot. has been... Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, especially when it's a, lot, it's a lot... It's a lot... When it's a lot different to, like, your previous works as well, like, there's always that feeling in the back of your head. It's like, you know, is this, is this even going to land? Hmm... Yeah, we did. Um, we did throw in a few tangents on this one, didn't we? Um, so it's like, <laughs> <Thank> you. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Like, um, I don't know. I'd, I've I've been waiting to see what people think of of all the weird stuff on the album, you know, because it, it's it's not too far out there, but there's some there's some unexpected twists and turns, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've I've been looking forward to seeing what people think, and yeah, like it's it's all been positive so far you know um and have you found a nice balance between getting the feedback from people who have never heard the Kisses before this and i guess your long-term fans the ones you've names you've seen and heard before who kind of been following your career up to this point um that's a hard one isn't it really because i think we get so many shares and and um I mean, we have had an increase in, in like our Spotify followers and stuff like that and comments on our YouTube from people that we don't necessarily recognise the names of, but we've always had a fan base from all over the world. And I guess the problem when you have people that listen to your music in other countries is you don't necessarily have a connection with them or you don't know who they are. So, you know, we just see names coming in. Um that we send stuff out to yeah. and you never really have any interaction with people like that. But, um, you know, there's been a few names that we don't recognize, um, saying positive things about the album. And there's been a whole host of new, um, review sites that have been, um, getting in touch to review the album too. Um, which I think has helped get the reach out there. So yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, it is a brilliant piece of work. You know how I think of it oh, at this stage. Thanks. And I do yeah. really hope <laughs> you're um, proud of what you've accomplished here. To, it's, it, it comes across like a massive step forward um, for you as a band. Is that something you're actually aware of? I think so, yeah. Jinx, do you want to go? <laughs> no, no, you go first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like... Uh... God, I did. I did have something, and I got. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It does. It does feel like a, a step forward. I mean, every release that we've done, or anything that we've done as a band, whether it be uh, from the live aspect or from the studio, we've always um, we've always tried to learn learn from that experience. So we learned an awful lot when we did uh, when we did the New Dawn, for example, because we entirely self produced that up to like the mixing stage um, <coughs> and mm. you know we were able to look at what came out of the other end of that one and see what worked what didn't and kind of expand on our own skill sets and uh, just kind of develop everything from there so everything each album is a massive learning curve as we've done more and more things ourselves 
Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you got any anything else, guys. Um, yeah, for sure. Like the new dawn was was a huge learning curve in itself, wasn't it? It was the first time that the four of us had kind of been let loose um, to do our own thing, you know. Um, and yeah, it was just kind of let's see if we can achieve this thing that we've got stuck in our heads and, and get it out there, you know. And and I think we managed that. Um, and yeah, like Matt says, we've uh, used that learning experience to kind of. Uh, throw into fractures you know um and try and create something even better you know yeah i mean it seems to me like um years of experience is clear in this album as well uh that your time playing live and what you've learned in the period between the last release and this one it's not just even in the sound but also in your music videos and the way you're holding yourself on stage now and the promotion of yourself on, on social media, it it seems far removed from the UK underground, basically, if that makes sense. Well, we do. We like to aim high. <laughs> you know, um, um. I think we're definitely kind of seen as a bit more of a, a mature band <clears throat> on the scene now because we've we've had the chance to work with some some bigger bands, you know, bands that are signed. We do a lot of events ourselves, a lot of promotion. We work a lot with other bands. And I think although we fall into the unsigned niche category, um, part of the reason why we are signed to our own um, label, Capsarx, is so that we maintain full control. So I think sometimes new people that discover us um, kind of think that we're we might be a new undiscovered and side band but actually you know we've been doing this for 11 12 years now and, and we're we're mature <laughs> <laughs> not old mature, mature. Right <laughs> um it's pretty clear i mean even the way you talk about it and from what you've got from me it was a lot of work for actually has taken a lot of work a lot of time and effort um, is there anything when you reflect upon it that you think was either the hardest or the one thing you'd really never want to experience again from it? Not really. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I can't think of anything anyway. Is it, it, in in terms of like how we produced it, um, I feel like we made a lot of the right decisions at the time, and we'd used the learning, you know, the learning experiences from the previous two albums to. Uh, kind of guide us in the best way for this one yeah for uh, sure yeah. um but in terms of like uh the most difficult parts of like putting it all together was, um uh definitely lyrics <laughs> oh yeah um because um you know we we kind of know what we want to say but trying to trying to find out how to say it is always the okay. hardest thing so how what do you tend to do when it comes to lyrics do you sit together as a group or do you do it individually and then send each other ideas we tend um, to work in a group, don't we, mostly, or in pairs, and then bring it together as a group and and work on it that way. But um, you know, everything that we write is is a massive metaphor, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and that's the hardest hardest bit about it. I think is is creating lyrical themes and concepts that kind of get these emotive things out that you're trying to say, but without actually saying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> although that being said i'm just gonna throw a curveball in and say the hardest thing for me was mixing the album that was uh oh i found well, yeah, the mix <laughs> i found the mixing really easy personally uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> that was the biggest hurdle for me personally yeah <laughs> so um i love the fact that we when you talked about the metaphor is i think that's something that really does come across with the band when you listen to the album um and it's kind of that you're saying something but it's not direct and you can interpret it in a certain way if you so choose or you can interpret it this way you can interpret it that way and that's mm. nice i think for people i think that's kind of what we we aim for is that you know we use music as a a very um cathartic way of of dealing with things that we go through you know life in general and we hope that fans will also kind of use music to do the same so by having it open to interpretation it means that they can kind of use it as as they wish, if that makes any sense. You know, they can use it for, for whatever they need to without like being told what it's about. 
yeah, I was gonna say that 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 that's kind of like the just the a lot of the common goals of a lot of writers and lyricists anyway. It's just um, uh, not making things too specific, but um, uh, something that people can either draw their own experiences into or uh, interpret in their own ways. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess ultimately the, the the dream and hope would be that any one person takes something from it, another person takes something completely different. And for one person, it might be, oh, this is great, I can headbang to it. Another person, it might be, wow, this band is speaking... In a different in a language I can, only I can understand, guys. Right, we'll move on to your second selection then. Horror movies, one each. Um, who wants to go first? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I can give it. A, I can give it a go. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, this. I mean, technically action horror, but um, probably aliens. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The sequel. Yep. Yeah, classic. Yeah, I mean, horror is so subjective. That's the thing. It's not just like it's got to be blood and guts and gore and scariness and so on. A horror comedy, an action thing. Aliens, for all its action, has more than enough horrific scenes to... Uh, <laughs> well, basically, you wouldn't sit down with your 10-year-old and watch it. That That's a big clue. <laughs> yeah, even though it's an action... Even though it's definitely like an action horror, I'm still uh, a big fan of like the first ones in the... Like, the suspense horrors and all that kind of stuff uh where the the monster is scarier because you can't of course, see it yeah you know, that kind of thing yeah do you uh do you watch a lot of horror then or is this kind of just not something you touch upon much uh i don't really i don't really watch a lot of horror to be honest i've i've tried to get into it um but I feel like I, I have to wade through a lot of shit to get to, to a good one, like um, you know, like like aliens or or something like wreck. Yo, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, yeah, stuff like that. It's um, something that's a bit different, you know, outside of the typical tropes of the genre. Of, you know, oh, uh, cabin in the woods is uh, another probably another one I'd have to go for, just for the parody. Oh yeah, and the subverting of expectations uh, in any, particularly a flashy Hollywood horror, is was a nice surprise. Um, right. I'm not Do you sure. have one, Adam? Um, not, not particularly. You um, need I a did... bit more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, I have been trying to think about this since, um, uh, you, you know, since since you asked the question um, before, but like. Like I say, I, I haven't seen all the classic films and stuff. Is there something from, I don't know, even a flash of a scene from your childhood that you remember that maybe scarred you or scared you or something like that? I don't know, I've probably blacked it out. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, honestly, I can't think of any, any horror films. Um, I've seen I've seen all the parody ones. I've seen the scary movie. Oh, franchise. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, you all means go with that. One of our guests brought Scooby Doo, the live action really? Scooby Doo <laughs> movie in. Yeah. So oh, right. we're not nice. we're not kind of taking this as seriously as you might think. Okay. <laughs> well, in that in that case, I'd probably take all the original Scooby Doo's then, like you know, um... <laughs> the cartoon series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You still have those. <laughs> Plenty of ghosts and evil beings and that, so it works. <laughs> yeah, that, okay, that counts. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> Brilliant. Amy, have you got a serious one? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually. I would take the original black and white Night of the Living Dead. Oh, wow, okay. Why that one? Um, I used to watch a lot of horror um, before I uh, became a grown-up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really watch horror now because I don't know it. I have a very overactive imagination, so whatever I'm watching before I go to bed, I tend to you know lie awake at night thinking of because um, that's kind of what happens when you get older, isn't it? You ruminate on things that have happened in the day, and when you're younger, you're a lot more invincible, and it's really cool to stay up till three a.m. watching horror movies. Mm. Um, and yeah, I used to watch that one at least like once a week for a good few years. Um, whenever friends came over, we'd always watch specifically the, the black and white version. And I, I don't know why, but I just, just loved it. Yeah, it's really interesting because even as a kid, you think you'd be more appealing to the 90s colour version uh, that came out. Yeah, I'd, 
I don't even know why we we had that um, or why I picked it up. I think actually I think I bought it from Music Zone back in the day. Right. Um, where you know they do deals where it was like six pound sixty six for um, you know DVDs or three pound thirty three for the the proper cheap ones, yeah. and it was probably that 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 one was the cheapest, and you know I just used to go in and buy loads of DVDs and CDs. It's what we used to do then. <laughs> You got ripped off. That movie's free. It's in the public domain. <laughs> <laughs> it was on DVD though, so. Ah, there you go. <laughs> what about? I think um, it's probably probably in the loft, actually. <laughs> oh, that's a classic. You got to get that out. And um, what about Romero's <laughs> following films, The Dawn Day and the later ones? Have you seen any of that stuff? I've seen a few of those. Yeah, so Dawn of the Living Dead and Day of the Living Dead and. Um, what else has there been? Land, Diary. I think Land I've seen. Yeah. I haven't seen Diary. And Survival of the Dead was the last one before he died, so. I haven't seen Survival. You, you, you um, don't, but, don't, don't worry about it. But I mean, they're, they're, they're all pretty much the same, aren't they, really? It's a zombie. You can only do <laughs> so of, much yeah. with a zombie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, Night and Living Dead had its impact on you, like it did many people, which is why it's such a beloved movie. Mm. So I'm going to read a couple of words, right, that have been used to describe you in reviews or on social media that I've seen, right? And I want you to tell me out of all these buzzwords, individual words, which one you think is the best way to describe fractures. So stylish, bombastic, epi, epic, heavy, fast, exciting, intriguing, enlightening, sexy. <laughs> Oh, sexy of all things. Yes. <laughs> so describe a prog album. <laughs> I think we've reached new levels now. <laughs> uh, described as sexy. Wow. Uh, like, yeah, I definitely think bombastic. That. Bombastic. Bombastic, yeah. bombastic, I think. Yeah. I'd have gone for uh, pompous, but bombastic. <laughs> uh, quite yeah. Enough. yeah, I like I like intriguing. Um, uh, that's yeah that suits me i think i think all of these were taken from reviews that were positive basically so there was none of even the sexy one was taken from praise glad at least it seems everyone has a thought even if it's a one word thought on it <laughs> yeah yeah no, that's, that's really good yeah and um and thanks for your review as well like uh we were all beaming um, you know, watching the video back. Oh, the, yeah, the awkward reaction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, obviously, live performances are on hold now uh, for the time being, which, you know, we've already said frustrating and disappointing, and we could trade that waters for ages. However, we're not talking cancellations here. We're talking postponements. Um, this is basically now you're biding your time and waiting, right? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, we don't we don't know when we're going to be able to put the album launch show on again. Um, so it's frustrating being stuck in some kind of limbo, you know. Um, uh, but yeah, some sometime, sometime. But, it will um, you know, the <laughs> venue's all paid for. Um, uh, everything was was self promoted there, so it is just a case of rescheduling the date. Um, the the danger that we have at the moment is when do you reschedule it to because we don't know how long this will go on but the asylum are very supportive and yeah. um we are trying to move our entire tour to april next year um which is just taking a bit of time to work out logistics for um so you know essentially we we're just kind of wiping 2020 off the map <laughs> And hoping that next year is going to be it, better. It seems to be <laughs> yeah, the, when... the, the thing to do right now is just kind of chalk 2020 up to a, a loss. Yeah, yeah, we need some kind of fast travel. So it's more like... Um... <laughs> just skip yeah. to the uh, skip scene. Yeah, or maybe, maybe just the montage, like if we could settle for that. Although, it, it's... I don't know. Good that you're thinking out far ahead because the expectation would be you're just waiting for Boris to say go and everyone's going to come racing out of the blocks trying to book every venue possible to pick up their shows and stuff. It's happening. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's already um, outside of the keys. It's like I promote other shows and, and book other bands and quite a few of the events that I've been involved with have been 
cancelled and people are already scrambling to rebook tours and dates. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> but not just as a band for yourselves to get out, though, I guess, but a fan base as well. It's going to be such a cathartic feeling when it finally happens and mm. you're going to get to do that album launch show. And I guess it'll almost be like finally getting out of the starting blocks for Fractures because that's only what's happened. You, you, you wanted to run <coughs> and the gun hasn't gone off. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's like I say, it's very frustrating. Um, but I'm sure it'll pay off in the end. Like, you know, at least people will know the song before they come to the show <laughs> this time. You know, because we do the album launch on the on the day of the release. You know, so because um, I like the idea of, of having that that fresh feeling. You know, like you've never heard these songs before, and they're being performed for you in front of you, and you know. But then it's it's easier to get into things when you've had time to get used to the songs as well, you know. So, so there's yeah. that. It may be a it may be a some kind of weird blessing in disguise. Who knows? Uh, I mean, like, it's it's a lot of music to digest. So you get people getting a real chance, I guess, and a decent chunk of time. Um, you're not concerned at all that people are going to forget. <laughs> Good. I don't think so. <laughs> I could have No, no, because... You know, um, I'd like to think not. <laughs> with, there's so much <clears throat> often negativity surrounding these events, and particularly in our scene, whether it be uh, uh, venue needs help, bands need help, and this and that. Um, we've When we've been talking to people, we've been trying to focus a lot on the positives and sort of trying to sort of sway it to be one way over the other, in the sense that, for example, um, we, want, we were speaking to someone about... Um, when venues are open, their their concern was that people won't go because they won't quite have gotten over that fear mm. yet of, you know, the virus and stuff like that. Yeah. And from my perspective, and I'm wondering how you feel about it, I think it's going to be the opposite, that people are going to be so desperate and hungry to get mm. out and feel normal and do something normal <clears throat> that for the first couple of months, if you are... Um, an underground band used to 10 people turning up at your shows, you're probably going to get a hell of a showing for a while, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, um, people were racing out to the pubs even yeah. when they'd been told not to, you know? So I, th I think it's going to happen. People are going to go mad staying indoors and... and Imagine, the weekends. Imagine the weekend when quarantine's Ooh. lifted. It's going to be mad. Oh, it's gonna yeah. be busy. <laughs> like, people are going to I go. Hope I'm not nuts, work that weekend. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. Finally, we're up to your records. Then one each. What would you take with you? Yeah. I, I would go for um, <laughs> I the new mythology suite by Symphony X. Okay. Wow. So next album. <clears throat> All right. Big fan. Massive mm. fan. I don't know if uh, anyone can pick up on. <laughs> Any of the uh, <laughs> Symphony X influences in our music, yeah, massive fan, massive fan. And what is it about that record in, be, that makes you bring that one? Just um, the reprisals in everything. Um, each song, I, don't, I think that that for me is the album that kind of um, you first start seeing um, them use these kind of reprisals in their music where they're bringing back motifs and themes. And it's so subtle that you don't always recognise it until you go back and you listen to the back catalogue or um, when you're listening to um, some of the newer albums, they often reference that album um, in the newer tracks. And it is so subtle that unless, you know, you, you listen to it a lot, you just wouldn't even notice. Um, and the lyrical themes are, are just incredible. Um, Russell Allen's vocal lines... Just absolutely beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's definitely one of my favourite albums of theirs. Oh, fantastic. Mm. Very, very prog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Symphony X are one of those bands that we all agree on. Uh, oh, so it's a United <clears throat> front and Symphony yeah. X. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we're all we're all huge fans. Yeah. <laughs> heavy, heavy Symphony X influence like all over all over our stuff, I think. Mm. Presumably, <laughs> Matt, Adam, you you're not bringing Symphony X albums though, right? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we all take the same album. That would be good content, oh, wouldn't yeah. it? <laughs> all, of us, all of us turn up with the same album, wearing the same oh, shirt. So <laughs> <laughs> um, no, do you want to go, Matt? Or oh, I, 
I need some time. <laughs> okay. Um, well, for me, it, it would be um, it would be a toss up between Genesis and Pink Floyd, because um, I'm I'm a huge fan of the old prog as well as the new prog, and the heavy prog, and uh, you know all the progs. Um, but um, but yeah, the early stuff, especially Genesis, I grew up listening to. Um, so, and you know, we're going to be there for a while, presumably. Mm -hmm. Um, stuck on a desert island, so I would I would take probably the Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Uh, it's a long album, uh, and I still don't know what it what it's all about. So I'd probably spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. <laughs> okay, and like, were these things you listened to at a younger age and influenced your musical taste or your musical um, direction? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. I like when I'm writing. It's kind of like. The, the classic prog ideas, but heavier and and newer, and with the new technology, yeah. you know. Um, so I guess pretty much what Symphony X do, <laughs> but <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of of all that stuff. So um, yeah, it would be a toss up between that one and, and the Wall, you know. Um, They're gonna keep you busy so, yeah. for a long time. There's so many layers in either the ones. Oh my. Yeah, I mm. remember hearing. I remember hearing that when I was way too young to be listening to that kind of album, so could never really <laughs> appreciate or understand. And I hated it for such a long time. <laughs> Come back to it at an old age, learn to appreciate things like yeah. that a lot more. Um, yeah. Mm. What about you, Matt? You got <laughs> one? Um, uh, I always find these questions really mm. difficult because I don't. I don't have a favorite band. I don't have a favorite artist or anything like that. I kind of go through phases of listening to like different subgenres. Yeah. Um, and uh, at the moment, I'm been, I'm in a bit of a weird uh, sort of instrumental uh, prog rock phase. Okay. <laughs> um, I've been binging a lot of. Uh, like polyphia lately um a, a bit mental um but if i was to take an album just one album it would probably have to be a zerath oh, album wow. um either huh. zerath two or maybe zerath three Ooh. um because it's um as the second one has heavier heavier riffs but the third one, I feel, is a lot more dynamic in terms of uh, in terms of its content. It's a lot longer as well, so that's <laughs> probably one that would keep me the most entertained for the longest. I think. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, you certainly win bingo for pulling the most obscure out of the three um, for Zera in that sense. Um, but is it just there's something you're enjoying right now? Is it something you've enjoyed for a long time, Zerath? Um, yeah, they're they're a band that Amy introduced me to many years ago. Like just, just I think it was just after they dropped their first album, or like their first single off their first album or something. Mm. And um, they're just one of those bands I've always uh, thought have been criminally mm. underrated. Um, you know, they've they've I don't know. I, I've never heard another band quite like them. Mm. The way they use um, they use uh, their orchestration as well is very clever, um, and I think you know that's probably been an influence on on the kind of stuff we do as well. You know, huge. It's it's part of the it's, you know that you know those guys in Nightwish are probably like the main reason we're using like heavy orchestral elements in our music. Yeah, uh, definitely. Okay. Um, just yeah, I mean Zerath aren't as like bombastic as using a full orchestra. They just use little bits and pieces to like accentuate certain things and create atmosphere and textures. But it's it's very unique how they choose to utilize it. I think it's like, although actually no, just remembering who's involved with it. Probably uh, either that album or uh, the album uh, by Pentakill, the uh, second one, Grasp of the Undying. That's actually yeah i think i think i'd have to go with that one it's the same it's the same guys from zera after that but like fucking hell that album is ridiculous <laughs> i get the impression <laughs> you're gonna be trying to one. sneak both of these on in the end um with <laughs> Zerath, i can completely relate weirdly enough Zerath 2 is an album i can remember exactly where i was at a specific point in time when i heard it we know um same. so i think that impacts says enough <laughs> 
Right, guys, we're going to wrap this up then with uh, two final questions for you. Firstly, can you think of anything, or tell us and the people that are watching this personally, something positive that has come out of you being under lockdown and under this situation? Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's a tough first, one. <laughs> for the first time in a very long time, I'm actually playing guitar for fun Ooh, again. Wow. Um, which... Um, like outside of the keys, this might I add. Like, um, you know, I, I I love playing the keys stuff live and doing shows and stuff like that. But it's very different to just sitting down in your room and just um, either writing or learning a new piece of music or just playing just for the yeah. fun of it for your own enjoyment. And when you've been uh, teaching for so many years and you've you know you've you've built a career around music, you start to lose that free time that you would usually offer to uh, build up your skills on your instrument or just do that kind yeah. of stuff. And for the first time in years, I'm sitting down every day playing for fun. Um, huh. that's, that's been quite a, a pleasant silver lining yeah, it's really for nice. me personally. Mm. I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> For guitar, <laughs> not drums. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I did bring the acoustic home from the studio, so I need to I need to figure out how to play guitar again. Okay. <laughs> I've been sitting at the piano and just noodling, but that's about it so far. I, I have to agree with Matt on this one. Um, it was a bit... I went to the studio um, the other week to collect some gear, and it was a very sad state in there where we've all kind of taken our our bits of equipment home. <laughs> um, yeah. it, it did look a little bit apocalyptic in there, I'm not going to lie. But um, <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I brought home um, both of my basses and uh, one of my guitars. And um, the, the same as, as Matt really is, um, I managed to get a little recording rig set up in my office. And um, the other day was the first time that I've sat down in probably about two years and actually just learn some songs for fun and just jammed out and played and, and played bass for my own enjoyment that wasn't learning covers or um, learning stuff to teach people or learning the new Dakisis album, which, you know, is a task in itself. Um, so, yeah, that's that's been really good. That's fantastic. So... Only music so ingrained in you, no matter what positive comes out, it still relates to music. But it's it's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's stories like this, even if it's something um, small or large, it's just the kind of thing that people like to hear. And that you, you're you not just sitting there wallowing in self-pity going, oh, this sucks. Okay, you've seen, taken an opportunity from this. Um, yeah. So lastly, what what can fans of Dekesis do to you, do to help you guys during this particular period. Now we have the obvious, go and buy the album. But you're, <laughs> you know, without asking people for money, what would you say to a fan right now saying, "Listen, I want to be able to do something for you." Uh, what would you ask? I think um, sharing our posts, engaging with our posts, telling yeah, us what they touch. want. Yeah, telling us what they want <clears throat> um, to see from us um, that would would brighten their day um, and following us on various um, sites, following us on Spotify, adding us to their playlists. You know, these are things that don't cost any money that can really help bands, um, you know, increase their reach. And also um, by letting us know what, what you want to hear from us or what you want us to do, um, you know, we're in a position to, to give back to you and, and say thanks for, for all the support that we've had. Because you're all over the place as well. You're active and on everything, really, from Facebook, Instagram, to Twitter, to Spotify, as you say, Apple Music, YouTube. You, it's not, you're not difficult to find, basically. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the weird name everywhere. helps with that. Like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very good. Guys, thank you very much. I'm going to love you and leave you here. You're on the island. I'm off. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, 
do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?